Good morning, everyone. Happy Lord's Day to you. It is Sunday, March the 7th, and we have um, come to the beginning of the fourth of the Gospels. So far, we have read through the words of Jesus in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and we come to John's Gospel today, and, and just to kind of set the foundation for John's gospel. It's a little bit different than the um, other three. The other three are more um, telling the how of the story of Jesus. John's gospel is more along the lines of, while it's historical as well, it's more instead of the how, it's more of the why of, of Jesus coming. And so I want to start at the very beginning of John chapter one. Um, today, we do not see um, any direct words of Jesus, but I think that it is um, vitally important that we understand where John is coming from. And the words of John chapter one, verses one through five, really give us the um, the foundation that we need when we understand who Jesus is. So listen to these words from John chapter one, beginning at verse one. The Bible says, in the beginning, <clears throat> the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought, it, brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So in the first three Gospels, we see uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke focusing on the physical coming of Jesus, his birth, the lineage of what, what got, got us to that point, <clears throat> those that were present at the birth of Christ. John, on the other hand, talks about the fact that Jesus, um, in addition to his physical coming here on earth, he has always existed. Um, a couple of things to note that in, in scripture, in this part, in John chapter one, the description of Jesus is as the word, and the word is always capitalized. And, and so we have a connection here that Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus. And, and what John does in a very uh, poetic fashion is he basically says that when you see Jesus, you see God because Jesus is God. He says that, that Jesus existed at the beginning with, with God. And in fact, Jesus is the agent of creation. The, the Godhead through Jesus created everything and holds everything together. And then we see John um, transition as he refers to Jesus as the light, literally the light of the world. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So while John does not give us the account of Jesus' birth, he goes much deeper than that. He says, Jesus has always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus is the agent of creation. And when Jesus came, not only did he give life to everything at creation, he has come through being the light of the world to give life to everything, to give new life to those who will accept him and believe in him. And, and verse five, again, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Jesus as a human, 
as God himself, fully God and fully human, came into a dark, sinful world. And his light was one that will shine for all eternity. But now here's the key for you and me. Here is here is the, the thing that we really need to hold on to. Grab hold of it and hold on to it. The scripture says that Jesus is the light of the world. But Jesus commissions us to take up that baton, take up that mantle of him being the light of the world, and he challenges us, he charges us, if you will, to continue that um, focus, that purpose, that we, just like Jesus, are the light of the world because his light lives within us and his light is supposed to shine through us. So as we start this new uh, book, this, this Gospel of John, and as we walk the days leading up to Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the resurrection in, in just a few short weeks, let us continue more fervently than ever to be the light of the world, to let his light shine through us today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that um, Jesus came, that he lived a sinless life, and that he willingly laid down his life as a sacrifice for us to redeem us from the curse of the law. We thank you for that. Let that light shine in each one of us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I trust that you will have a wonderful Lord's Day. We look forward to seeing you at 11 o'clock this morning at West Shore as we kick off our Easter sermon series called Reverse the Curse. We're going to talk about the curse that has plagued all of humanity from the beginning. But we're also going to talk about the fact that Jesus has reversed the curse. We'll see you at 11 o'clock at West Shore, and um, we hope you'll join us. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and may he give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Have a great day. God bless you. Take care.